In October 1855, an aristocratic lady from England died of dysentery somewhere on the road between what is the modern city of Antakya in Turkey and Beirut, which is in the modern nation state of Lebanon. In 1855, those were all in the Ottoman Empire. And she was a widow and traveling with her daughter, Victoria. And Victoria and her daughter would change the language of our world forever. And today's episode of Life's Potluck Buffet is a little bit about their story and its after effects. So stick around for a very brief dive into the world of semantics. I'm John Paulus. Thanks for listening. Okay, so back to our story. In 1855, Lady Emmeline Stuart Wortley, who was a poet and writer, and she had published a travel book called Travels in the United States, etc., and she, that was very well received, and she was um, widowed and decided to travel various routes in the world and along with her daughter. And as I mentioned in the beginning, her daughter's name was Victoria, and Victoria was intensely interested in language and art and music and got married to a another member of the British aristocracy, Sir William Earl Welby Gregory, who was a baronet. And that Welby family had been high sheriffs of what is the favorite ceremonial county of them all in Life's Pilot Buffet, Lincolnshire. And they lived in a manor, Denton Manor, which was, it's since been demolished. It was in the um, 1930s, I believe. It 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 was taken down. And... That is near a place in Lincolnshire called Grantham. Yeah, I said Grantham. If for all of you Downton Abbey fans out there, another contemporary of ours, a British aristocrat, Julian Fellows, who is best known as the screenwriter of the show Downton Abbey, used a long extinct earldom as the title for Hugh Bonneville's character, Lord Grantham. The Earl of Grantham was from this very area of Lincolnshire. That earldom had long, long been extinct, but he used it in this fictional sense. And another title of that, uh, of that um, that went with the uh, Earl went with the, along with the Earl of Grantham was Viscount Boston, which, as you'll remember from our episode about counting sheep in Boston, we were talking about the Boston in Lincolnshire, not in Massachusetts. So there you have it. But you know, Massachusetts is going to come back into play here in our story of. Uh, Victoria, Lady Welby, and her daughter, uh, who we'll get to in a second, because when living at uh, the manor house in Denton near Grantham in Lincolnshire, um, Victoria, Lady Welby, or Lady Welby Gregory, as the peerage calls her, uh, the she... Um, had a correspondence which with Charles Sanders Pierce. 
because she had written uh, um, uh, about what is meaning and cared about the philosophy of language and had a deep, deep correspondence with Charles Sanders Pierce, who was one of the uh, um, American founders of a discipline called semiotics, which had everything to do with signs and uh, the, their relationships and therefore with meaning. And so she actually popularized the wor work of Charles Sanders Pierce among her circles across the pond, and that really made his work really important and famous. So she did the kind of work of promoting the work of Charles Sanders Pierce, who, by the way, was born outside of Boston. No, not Boston and Lincolnshire, Boston and Massachusetts. He was born in, in Cambridge, Cambridge, Massachusetts, not Cambridge. Okay, anyway. So um, he wasn't living there at the time. And so the deep interest that Victoria Lady Welby Gregory had in language and meaning and significance and in the what to call it, uh, what to name this area of study, um, had a great influence on her daughter, who was named after her grandmother, Emmeline, but went by Nina. And she married a man by the name by the name of uh, Cust, and so um, her name the people knew her as Nina Cust, and Nina Cust did something that changed the way that we talk about meaning, because Nina Cust translated into English the work of a French author where, in which he focused on the word that had been coined semantique. And she translated it into English as semantics. And this would be the name that stuck for the idea of the study and the science of meaning in language. And so today, when you talk about the, when you're talking about ontologies and metadata in your business, and when you're talking about the semantics of this all, and you know, semantics has to do with the meaning and relationships of these things that we've been talking about for the past couple of days, that's really the area where sh semantics shines. And there's a lot of overlap, as you, as you probably already know, from the word salad of uh, business terms that you hear uh, probably on some, some of us on an everyday basis, you can see that there's a kind of slipperiness to all of these words because they start to overlap. So then all of a sudden you start to have ontologies are metadata. Metadata um, is, you know, able to be um, the relationships of metadata and ontologies are understood through semantics, and you can see how these all these all connect and work together, and sometimes they get quite confused. But the really critical area of semantics right now that is is going on focuses on language and computer language and machine language, and what the um, how machines make meaning, because the way that machines make meaning are about mm, several well, tens of billions of neurons short of the way that human beings make meaning. So that's why you're not going to get the kind of same meaning out of machines that you can get out of human beings. So think about that for a second. And in honor of everybody involved in today's story, uh, 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 Nina Cust, her mother, Victoria, Lady Welby Gregory, and her mother, Emmeline Charlotte Elizabeth, Lady Stuart Wortley, who, by the way, was uh, 
born with the last name Manners, which, if that's not an aptronym for a lady of the manor, which is a homophone, not a homograph of, I don't know what is. So, let's draw a card in honor of all of them. Yellow lemons, blue dumplings, magenta noodles. Cards tell us some things, and really mean it. It's dangerous. This is going to be passion for the uh, for hobbies. Uh, it's card eighteen. Know what you do unconsciously. This is all about unconscious choice. Oh, we drew this the other day. So, in honor of our topic of the day, semantics, think about some little choice that you make, and instead of thinking about the process of the decision making or or why you made the choice. Think about what it means that you thought about that specific area. For example, if you decide you're going to think about you know, what toothpaste to use, then think about why you thought of toothpaste and what that means to you. I hope you have a great day. And if you get a chance, hit the subscribe button. It means a lot to, to me. Mm-hmm.